What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, based on the announcements that we got on D23, it further tells us, even though they've made an announcement for the Fantastic Four film um, that's coming in early 2024, I believe, Based on the information that we just received, and this is public information now, we got it from someone on the inside, but although I can try to find out, um, that they haven't cast it yet. At they're all. Look, at all. At all. They're looking to, as they're writing this, to go find someone that's willing to do this film. And the way, the reason why I say willing to do this film based it's based on the conversation you and I, Brian, had last week or the last on the last show that people may be unwilling to do this film, Brian. What are your thoughts on where they are at with Fantastic Four? Because this cannot, Brian, I repeat, this cannot be a rush down. Yeah, so I think I think we we when you see our reaction to d23 we, we, had a, we had one that was about sort of the non fantastic four non-mutant stuff and then we broke it up so when you see the fantastic four one you'll see our sort of realization and conclusion that they're just a lot farther away than i think anyone realized and i think today's news really confirms that so jeff kaplan and ian springer were hired as the writers to go along with Matt Shackman, who was confirmed as the director at D23 for Fantastic Four. And the article from Deadline and Hollywood Reporter says that the casting process is only kicking off now or about to kick off as the script is being drawn up, which means that every rumor you have heard up to now is just complete zero. I did some research on the writers because I was not familiar. And there's a reason I'm not familiar. They are, they are hot, but they are new. So they have sold, they don't have a lot of credits to their name. They have sold a number of scripts, more so in the comedy genre. Uh, they have a, they have like a Rebel Wilson comedy. They have a Warner Brothers comedy that they, they, they sold recently. But there's not a lot of like existing work for us to look at and say, this is the DNA of how they like to write. So this is a swing. Like Marvel's giving them a shot at a very big project. With Shackman directing having after having done WandaVision, I have a feeling Kevin Feige is going to be tight on this one. I think he's I think his fingerprints are going to be personally on this film more than maybe some of the other recent projects. It just you got unproven writers. And you got a director who's kind of been a little lower, lower level, like hasn't done a lot of big budget, but who's been in the MCU machine. I think all signs point to Kevin being kind of like really, really involved in every step of this process. Having said that, Brian, given phase four, given She-Hulk, does the... Do you, how does that make you feel about Kevin Foggy's fingerprints all over Fantastic Four, given those this situation that we're in with with how the MCU has been uh, putting out stuff and and it's been not necessarily there hasn't been horribleness across the board, but it's been very flaky, a la DC. Yeah, and we've talked about it, but it's. It, it, you know, it's a what have you done for me lately business, right? I mean, it, it's phase four is a weaker phase. I think he's kind of acknowledged it without explicitly saying it. I think he's acknowledged it because he changed. He changed where the ending point was. He basically put the ending point of phase four earlier than it originally was. And I think that's his way of admitting like, yeah, this probably didn't go quite as I hoped. That being said, you and I could be sitting here six months from now and Wakanda Forever is nominated for an Oscar and Quantum Media is well on its way to a billion dollars and we're no longer concerned, right? So like there is a little bit of, of that. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, this is, let's put it this way. 
I think this is a project with a high degree of difficulty because of the two versions of this that failed. And I also think to our prior discussions, this is also a project that needs to work for some of their grander plans with the Avengers, cosmic stories. I think this needs to work. Like if this is a middling origin film, like a kind of comes out of the gate lukewarm, I think that's that's a bad sign. Brian, we've, I, I've been saying this for months. Have it, even the thought of of the possibility of a Fantastic Four, uh, and even with the mutants, I've said they can't mess this up. They keep putting out a Fantastic. Every iteration of the Fantastic Four films that have come out, even one that there was one. In, uh, there was that, what was I looking at? I was looking at some sort of Instagram post about how they um, ranked all the superhero films. Um, and the first Fantastic Four film they ever put out, that old one that that never that didn't see the light of day, yeah, was up there. Then you have obviously the uh, what's the guy's name? The guy that did Barber Shop. Um, Tim, Tim Story. Tim Story. Yeah. Um, that that for me never made sense. And then Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. All of these movies have tanked. Yeah. That is why. And we've always said, if only the MCU had it or, or Marvel had it, whatever, whatever the case may be. When Marvel started being Marvel, we were like, oh, man, we can't wait for them to get Fantastic Four back. We can't wait to, for them to get the mutants back because they're going to kill it. The time has arrived. And we're getting closer to that. And the fact that we don't, we didn't get a, 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 any uh, announcements for Fantastic Four and the mutants. And based on the information that we got today, they're far off on giving us something for us to be excited about other than knowing that this title is coming to us. Yeah, and I I say like, I do think still their highest consistent batting average has been with casting. So that should, that makes me encouraged. I still feel like Marvel's casting, generally speaking, pretty good. Like I feel like we even the newer characters there's been a lot more hits than failures. This, I mean, there's some where we got questions. Honestly, I think some of the um, biggest questions we have are some of these end credit cameos where it's like, where's Harry Styles going? Where's Charlie Theron going? Like, that's some of my bigger questions. But the characters we've actually seen, whether it be, you know, Florence Pugh, uh, you know, even like Simu Liu, where it's like, okay, as a starting point, that's not bad. You can build off that. Um, but certainly some of the, you know, like uh, Jonathan Majors, obviously, uh, Sophia Martino, like Catherine Hahn, like they've been doing a pretty good job. Like I feel still feel like a bringing new characters in, um, even though what was it America Chavez, that little the young actress played America Chavez, Kate Bishop. Um, they, so they, I feel like Marvel's still giving you a pretty good match between who they're hiring and like the part they're playing. But as I alluded to last time, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. This one is trickier to me because as I said, I I will be shocked if Disney trots out four Caucasian actors to do this. I, I don't see it. But when you work through how to make that work in a way that fits with the comics, but also kind of honors representation, it gets a little tricky. Based on the conversation that we had um, in our previous podcast, you had mentioned that Reed Richards is the most likely candidate for possibly being a person of color, and it makes sense. That's where I shook out. Yeah, that's where I shook out. I don't hear people talking about it, but I, I don't think it's the thing because you don't ever see the thing, and I know that shouldn't matter, but it yeah. does. People, it does these days. It does. Like back in the '90s, like when Michael Dorn was playing Worf on Next Generation, like. It didn't, it didn't matter as much, but now it does. And so that's why I don't think it can be Ben Grimm. Yeah. And I feel like in a weird way, the Josh Trank movie stole the other idea, which was he did, they changed the siblings to being adopted and they 
flipped yeah. Michael B. Jordan versus Kate Mara. I, so I don't think Marvel's going to want to repeat that because they don't want the association with that film, which kind of then by default left me with, what if it was Reed? And nobody is talking about Reed being played by a person of color. It would work either way for me. Um, it, would, it would be very interesting if they would go that route with Reed. Very interesting. But if they didn't do it and they put four Caucasian people out there, I, I, for me, I don't care. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, that's not the point. I'm, I'm just saying, based upon what Disney seems to be trying to do in its projects, and I'm just saying, based upon the world we're living in, yeah, I find it unlikely. I just, I yeah. find it unlikely that I, yeah. you know. But you still got to be true to the family aspect of this story, and that means you can't, you know. Rings of Power is getting all this heat for doing things that I think are completely harmless. It's like the idea that there could be. Uh, as you know, a Latin elf or a black dwarf. Of course, they're fantasy species. Who the, like people who are like, oh, that, that can't possibly be. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, it makes no sense to me. But in this, because there's a family aspect, it does need the, the the origins from birth to where we meet them to where they go. It does matter. Like their camaraderie matters. So in in some ways, their roots do matter. Yeah. So. They can't rely on getting stars. If you start putting that aspect to it, it just takes me out of it, Brian. It's just going to take me out of it. No, I agree. I think, I think, I think Doom is the star to me. That's the A-lister. And I think that allows you to cast the four. And I think they're going to be younger. I do. I, I don't. I do. What's you know, younger? Thirty. Okay. I think, I think the actors are going to be at ages where they can be these parts for ten to twelve years, without really changing how they look. And I, you know, it's interesting. They they flagged this for James Bond right the other day. The Broccoli's family is looking for a decade plus. Out of, that's the way of the world, people. Yeah. That's why when you and I always talk about the age of characters, it matters. Like. That's reality. These are franchises. They have long-term aspirations. And these productions take years to get going and to get shot. So I think they're I think they're not going 20 something. I think I have a suspicion. I think some of the mutants when we get there are going to be young. I think you're going to oh, see some yeah. teen, teens and 20. Like I think yeah. you're going to see that. But for this, I think you could, I think I'm, I'm thinking 30. I think it like somewhere where the characters. The character might be somewhere between like 30 and 35, and the actor is also somewhere between like 28 and 35. I am going to throw out two names, and I'm sure some people are going to think I'm crazy, but two names for Reed uh, who fit this description. Both actors are actually 30 and 31. Uh, one is Caucasian, one is a person of color. Freddie Highmore and Lakeith Stanfield. Just going to float it. People are going to say I'm nuts. <laughs> Okay, but I'm That's just gonna crazy. exactly. I knew you say that. So Freddie Highmore plays the good doctor, but that's why I like it. So he's on ABC. He plays an autistic doctor who's basically a genius. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at him, you can kind of imagine like, he's kind of got Reed's hair. You can kind of imagine how you can manipulate, maybe even give him a, the beginnings of a beard. He obviously would put he would put on a little bit of weight, but he does the geek super intelligent affect incredibly well on that show to the point where he's been nominated for an Emmy for that. Yeah. So where that's in the way I keep thinking about it, that's what I want for my read. My read has to be so much smarter than everyone else in the room that it almost annoys everyone around. And to, and, see, the, and to see the frustration on his face where he has to dumb it yes. down for everybody. Yes. There's a little bit of arrogance there too. So Freddie Highmore is 30. Now the key don't look at him in Atlanta because, like, he doesn't look fine. There, if you look on YouTube, when he does, like, interviews and he does press tours, he puts on glasses, he gets really, like, cleaned up. That version. I'm telling you, I think he can do it. I think he can do it in a way that you would believe he is a genius. And I'm in my back of my mind. I'm like, I don't know this is where they're headed. But I feel like he and Jonathan Majors could have some chemistry if you're going to set them up 
in some day as like as a head to head. I just Ooh. have not seen anyone say this. Nah, nah. So those are my those are my two guys. Just as like ways you could go and read. Wow, I can but I can certainly see Lakeith Stanfield speaking that that language that that fast and just because he's done it before in other films, not necessarily from an intellect point of view, but just a person that's well spoken. I think Knives Out, he did a great job. Um, yep. um, uh, he, and he's a fantastic actor. It's just, you know. People have seen them, but they're not mega stars in the public consciousness. That is a good, that is, that is a very interesting uh, pig, Brian. That is a very interesting pick. Lakeith Stansfield as Reed Richards. Very interesting. Um, so right now, we're in the guess the first couple of innings of the creation of this uh, movie that we've all been waiting from Marvel. And Marvel, I believe, understands that they cannot afford to mess this up at all because it could truly truly been the beginning of of a long downhill road that perhaps they may not be able to recover and perhaps the genre may not able may not be able to uh recover as well um brian final thoughts yeah i think it's just that this is early but i think the other re the other thing i take from the article today is that the rumors are going to come flying, as we know. They have been flying. But now, for the first time, there's a process. So now, as we watch some of the rumors come in, maybe there will be an inkling of truth and, you know, some conversations being had. But it it kind of tells you, too, like, you know, we're, we're in late 2022. This thing is, this thing is under the gun, like, in my mind. Right, like to be yeah. where we are, we're two years away from release date for a movie of this scale. I think they're gonna need to get this thing signed and cast pretty quickly because they're gonna have to get a filming date in 2023 and leave plenty of time for post. Otherwise, the VFX artists are gonna be out of the woodwork again, saying they're they can't make this happen. And God, I don't want this movie to look bad. Uh, no, it can't. So. It can't. It can't. This movie has to be so much different than what we've seen. Um, I think Quantum Mania will be possibly a uh, testing ground for the, what the future may hold for some of these films visually. Um, uh, and I, I can't wait, Brian. I can't wait. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of where we're at with Fantastic Four. Um, with the writers, with casting, who do you cast as Reed Richards? Is like the key stands for is just an, I think is an amazing pick, Brian. Is an amazing. I'm, I thought you, I thought you might, I thought you might dislike it more than that. I'm actually a little, no, no, uh, yeah, no, 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 no because that was my I've off seen, the radar. Yeah, I've seen the guy work before, and and I can see him pulling that off. I had to think about it, like oh snap, and I can see him talking that 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 language and that dialogue and. And just sounding amazing, and 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 he's a very talented actor. So uh, it'll certainly be a different experience, but I, I think one that could uh, be game changing. I think for the Fantastic Four, um, very interesting. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, uh, what we just talked about, because it's. Uh, uh, there's a lot. Fantastic Four is, is a huge film. I don't think people understand yeah. how huge this film yeah. is for the for, for MCU, especially having given out a date for it. Yeah. It, 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 the, poten the, poten the upside, if you get it right, it's like a huge boom or bust project, right? The upside, if you get it right, I don't think people understand how big it could be. And then the downside, if they get it wrong, is this is, this is dead and buried. Yeah. As a yeah. story last three times and this time it's marvel so i know yeah. right and that's what i'm afraid of and that's what i think the mcu is afraid of as well but yeah brian uh we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report remember to hit that like and subscribe button